leave. I feel they abandoned me. They've barely spoken in 12 years. How do you sleep at night? Do you really think this is the time to attack this woman? But in this reunion... I have never seen such self-righteous right fighters in my life. They're not afraid to speak their minds. I want to know if there's a mental problem. It could be genetic, so you could all be nutso. Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free. Take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Fell. Okay, now they were a typical all-American family. A mom and dad who loved one another and four children who were thick as thieves. Now life was good, or was it? Now no one in this family can seem to agree. The divide started the day mom decided to divorce dad. Take a look. My parents divorced 12 years ago. My mom abandoned me and my siblings. My dad was a great dad growing up, and I didn't think my parents would get divorced. I didn't think their marriage was really in trouble. When my husband drank, he was very belligerent, very violent. One night, he was urinating in the hallway. Because he was so drunk, he thought he was in the bathroom. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. So I went to the courthouse, and I filed the restraining order to safely get him out of the house. An emergency order of protection is for when your life is in danger, and that wasn't the case. My dad was very shocked and crying when he came and told me about it. I was crying. I was upset. Our whole life just got turned upside down for no reason. It was a huge shock to all of us. The children should not have been surprised after everything they had seen and witnessed at the house. Carlin encouraged me to leave him. Carlin had even asked me, why do you stay married to him? So I don't know why she, of all other children, would have turned her back on me. My brothers and I testified in the hearing on my dad's behalf because we did not see or witness any signs of physical abuse in our home. My sister Alyssa took my mother's side during the hearing. I had never seen my mother this way before. I never had seen her so hateful in my life. Shortly after I was at work, my mom called me and told me I needed to come get all my stuff that was sitting outside. When I pulled up to my mom's house, everything that I had there was in the driveway. This is the house that I grew up in. When she threw me out of the house, my mom threw all my stuff out. Out. It was all sitting right up there by the garage, by the bushes. When my children found out that I had filed a restraining order, they came to the house while I was at work and took a lot of furniture and a TV. I was very angry. I could not believe they felt they had to sneak in behind my back and steal it. I was so upset that I went ahead then and changed the locks on the door and changed the code to open the garage door. I was afraid they'd come steal me blind while I was at work. I don't know how a mom can throw her kids out of the house. I was devastated when the kids left and sided with him. They never gave me a chance to explain my side. They did not phone me. They did not call to ask any questions. It was just almost like they dropped off the face of the earth. She hates us because we have a relationship with our father, and I do not understand how a mom can do that to her kids. Now, Carlin says she lives five miles from her mother, but they have barely spoken or seen one another in 12 years. Now, Jody's youngest daughter, Alyssa, tells a completely different story of who caused this family's drama. I blame Carlin for destroying my family. She tore it all apart, ripped it up into pieces. My father was the start of it, but I think she's the one that kept it going. Carlin is probably the most manipulative person I know. Pretty evil. She is the one that always held the connection with all of us siblings. So however she reacted, she wanted the boys to react the same way. I don't know why they did it this way. I think it was wrong. I was civil with them through the divorce, with all of them, including my father. And every time I would say, why don't you talk to mom? They flat out would just drop it. I have said, I am an only child because I haven't talked to them in over 10 years. It makes me upset that they've done this to my mother. She doesn't deserve it. She was the one that was always there. She was a great mom. And all of a sudden, they just turned on her. With Carlin being kind of the ringleader, I could see my brothers wanting to maybe reach out. If Carlin knew, they would get an earful. Why stick your whole body in a piranha tank? If you don't do something that she approves of, be ready to feel her wrath. 
Okay, so you two haven't seen each other in quite some time. Correct. Correct. How long? Probably about 12 and a half years. Really? And you live five miles away? Mm-hmm. Look, why are we here today? What do you want from me? I am hoping to get some answers of why I feel they abandoned me. I did not kick you out. I did not move. I did not change my phone number. They made it very clear to Alyssa and other family members, everyone in my whole entire family. They do not have any okay, communication Okay, so you want to with. prove up your victim no, role? No, 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 no. Oh, I want to know wait why. Wait you want to prove up your victim role. You said, I want to know why, why they abandoned me. I didn't abandon them. They abandoned me, and I want to prove that up. I did not kick them out of the okay. house. They chose to leave. You, you can't keep photo. changing the subject. Okay. I, I ask you a question, and you change the subject and give a non-responsive, not even answer, just a complete a different comment. Now, you're here for a reason. You want something from me. I'm not going to come in here and just let people kind of cross-talk. I want to know why you're really here. I would like to resolve the issue with my children. I've missed them. Uh-huh. Now, do you want to resolve or do you want to be right? No, no, I want to resolve it. And how about you? I think it would be nice to bury the hatchet, I guess. You know, I mean... I was civil with all of them for the first year. I didn't ask you to happen. defend yourself. No. I asked you what you wanted. Listen, because want I've read everything you guys have said, and I have never seen such a bunch of sanctimonious, yeah. self-righteous <laughs> right fighters in my life. And I didn't ask you to defend yourself. I said, how about you? Do you want to resolve I it? Do. You I said two that. words about resolving and said, now, as for me, I, <laughs> I, 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 really? I do want to resolve it. I do. I do. Why? I, th I feel that I've missed out on things in their life. I feel that they've missed out on our life. I mean, you know, we have so many family events and activities, and they don't, they're not part of them. Does it really matter who's right? No. No. Mm -mm. Well, why have you been fighting for 12 years to be right? I mean, think about that. What do you want? Why are you here? <clears throat> I want to know how a mom can abandon three out of her four children. How how you can do that to your kids, how you can drive by your daughter's house. I don't even know if it's fixable. How it sounds like an indictment. Because you're, you're saying, how could she do that? How bad a mother could you be? You don't believe you did anything to justify being cut off by your mother, being an outcast, do you? I don't think so. Okay, then why did you say that? You're not really asking for an answer to that. What you're saying is indict her, she's a bad mother, she backed out, she turned her back, dumped us kids, and I want that straightened up. That's true. When I called her a year ago, she said, um, I said, Mom, she said, who is this? I said, your daughter, Carlin. She calls me back, a couple, I asked her for some photos, she called me back a couple of days later, said, Carlin, this is Jody. First of all, how did you get my number? After and, your daughter called me. You're, calls you're me, telling me this because why? That's not a normal response for a mom. Okay, I didn't ask you if it was normal or not. I asked you why you're telling me this. What is your desired result? My desired result is to just, I guess, just get an understanding of what did we do now to Why are you this? telling me this? Because I, I always want your opinion. Whenever, whenever something happens, I always want to know what would Dr. Phil have to say about this. Like, this isn't normal for a mom to treat her kids this way. Okay, so you already know that it's not normal. So you don't yeah. need me to tell you that. You just want me to join you. I want to know if there's a mental problem or something going on. Okay. <laughs> That's not the case. I don't have a mental problem. <laughs> well, if she is, it could be genetic. <laughs> So you could all be nuts. So. <laughs> well, then take the whole family. Well, we'll take you all out back. All right. <laughs> Look, I'm here for a reason. And I want to know if it's fixable. Yes. Okay. It's fixable if you're fixable. If you're fixable. Mm -hmm. If you're fixable. If you decide that you're tired of being right and you want to be happy. All right, let's take a break. Mom thinks the real problem is that Carlin is just jealous of Alyssa, who she calls her shining star. We'll be right back. <laughs> Alyssa is my shining star. It makes me angry that they've abandoned Alyssa. She really did nothing to deserve any of this. Carlin 
and Alyssa were never real close when they were growing up. I don't think Carlin really liked her. She was often mean and picked on her. Carlin would purposely trip her or make her fall down. I assume now that it's because Carlin was jealous of her. Alyssa is my shining star. She's always happy, she's always pleasant, she's accomplished lots in her life. It makes me angry that they've abandoned Alyssa. If you really want to do this to me, you know, so be it. But she really did nothing to deserve any of this. Well, that was Jody, who says her eldest daughter, Carlin, is selfish, while her youngest daughter, Alyssa, is her shining star. So you're not proud of her? Well, I am proud of her. How do you know? You haven't seen her in 12 and a half years. I do not know her as an adult. I know a few things about her from others, but... How, how do you feel about that? Did you ever it breaks think, my heart. Did you ever think at this time in your life that you would be talking about your daughter and say, I don't even know anything about her as an adult? Absolutely not. We ask you all a lot of questions, Absolutely. and you've been very forthcoming. And I thought you were very honest and unfiltered, as were you. And Thank you. As were you, Terry. All of y'all were very forthcoming. Um, so I, I got to pull an analysis of what descriptors you used for the two. Jody says her feud with Carlin started after the divorce. But it's hard to believe when you hear the way she talks about the differences between the two girls. When she's talking about Alyssa, she says, my shining star always happy, pleasant, sees the brighter side of things, has such a big, bright, beautiful smile. You do have a beautiful smile. Thank you. <laughs> such a blessing to me and helped through the dark days. Always makes me smile and warms my heart. Always been very close, but divorce brought me even closer. Talk to her three or four times a day when she visits. I just don't even want to let her leave. That's true. Yeah. But she has it's, four kids. It's everybody's I know that. daughter you would want. I know that. Now, Carlin, you had a different set of adjectives mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. Very selfish and self-centered, always acted like an only child in a four-child family, a princess, would never do anything to break a nail or a sweat, the boss of everyone. She was. Mm -hmm. When they Not were little yet. children, they'd go out to play in the but yard. What are you, her mini-me? Every no, time she no, says no. something. No, I just, I'm <laughs> just, <laughs> no. You, you, you said this all started with a divorce. I mean, you're describing her as a child, as being selfish, self-centered, a princess, boss of everyone. When they'd go out to play when they were little, she'd line them up in the yard and a couple of the cousins, and she would say, okay, today we're playing Care Bears, and you be Funshine Bear, and you be this bear, and you be this bear. She even told them what bear they had to be, and they all said, okay. We were kids. I understand that, but you How were always dare you. I know, right? No. Such a horrible person. How it's just dare you? I wanted thing. to be Fun Bear. <laughs> She was, showing a she was always trait. bossy. She was always in control and, so, and had to be the boss of everything. So? My, she so, just was. No, she just was. But so just, what's your point? They all followed her around and played whatever she wanted to play. Okay, is that so she's always been bossy. Or a leader. That's, a leader. Yeah, maybe so. I, I, I don't know her as an adult. It's, it's very sad. It's very sad. Wow. Um, you got a divorce. I did. Thank God. And, and I, I don't know. I, I didn't know your, your husband. And uh, I know that you have described him in some very unflattering ways. Um, but I, I don't know him. But I do know you got a divorce. Um, divorce is very difficult on children. Yes, it is. Um, you, you were supportive of her decision yeah. during the divorce, correct? Mm -hmm. You've been supportive over the whole way. You and your, your brothers mm -hmm. were shocked by it, you say. The we divorce. were shocked. You were broken hearted by it and shocked by it. We were shocked about how it started. <clears throat> right. And it bothered you. And, and there was a hearing for a protective order. Yes. And you sided with your father about the protective order because you felt like we it was... We testified that the emergency order protection was untrue. There was no need for a domestic violence, restraining order, any of that. That was a shock. Uh -huh. Why? Why was there no need We'd for We never it? saw dad hit mom, punch mom, never saw with bruises. They'd argue, yes, but never <clears throat> physical violence. We never saw any of that. We never grew up with that. Okay. We did. We did not. You did grow up with that. Children don't really know every.
Swear I won't forget this Why do I regret this? In my mind reckless Thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless Anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless Betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open I hate being broken I feel like an ocean Filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion Rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking Reopen The scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go Thing there is to know about what happens between a husband and a wife mm -hmm. and so it's hard for them to make informed decisions you, you don't know what she said to him or he said to her when you weren't around you don't know what happened behind closed doors you don't know everything that goes on in the interactions between a, a husband and wife and oftentimes that's by design she exactly. might protect you from some of that awareness he, he might protect you from some of that awareness. So for you to pass judgment about that, you, you're uninformed and it's unfair for you to do that, to sit in judgment about that, which it's also unfair. It's why I say adults should not drag children into adult issues. Exactly. You should not have children at the time getting up and testifying, taking positions, taking sides, weighing in on things of that nature. It's just not right to do. It's difficult enough for children to watch their family fragment without putting them into the battle zone and having them make decisions where they feel like if I side with one, I'm betraying the other. And it's interesting that the one that you seem to be happiest with was coincidentally the one that supported you. Correct. You, get, you can divorce your spouse. You don't divorce <clears throat> your kids. And I felt like she divorced I all of us. I did not divorce you. you Carla, you used to, to ask me, why do you stay married to him? Yes. You'd ask me that. that you took that, your but, that, 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 but you don't understand. That doesn't matter. She's a child. At the time, she's a child. And I have something else to say about protecting your children. If she's such a protector, when she first started dating Terry, we got into an argument, my mother and I, he stepped in, he threw me on the ground, grabbed my hair and, and threw, grabbed my throat and threw me on the ground. She did nothing to protect me. That's not true. Is that because you went to punch him in the face no, and he true. was protecting himself? That is not true. All right, let's take a break. Up next, Jody says Carlin is the cause of all the family drama and has brainwashed her sons against her. Well, we're going to talk to one of those sons. 
Uh, he has a view, and we'll hear what it is when we come back. I believe there are blatant lies being told here. My daughter, Carla, and I feel is the ringleader of the group. She rules what should or shouldn't happen, and the boys just follow her and do whatever she says. I think she is the main reason that they do not contact me as well. I was most upset about my mother making false allegations against my dad about physical abuse and emotional abuse. There was never any physical abuse at all. I went with my brother to the house to try to talk to my mother about the situation. She didn't want to speak to us and told us that we needed to get off the property, otherwise she was going to call the cops on us. My mother never tried to even explain anything at all. She had kicked us out of the house. I was completely lost, emotionally hurt. I had noticed a major change in my mom to where she did not seem like that person that helped raise us. She was different. She just seemed like an evil person. I only spoke to my mother maybe twice in the last 12 years. My mother is a person that I no longer know. Blake, what do you want to see happen here? I just want answers as far as, you know, why everything happened, why, you know, she's never tried to get into any contact with us, because when my parents did get divorced, Alyssa, my brother, and Carlin, we all stayed close. So Alyssa, with her sta still staying close to our mother, she could have given our mother, our phone numbers. You told me you didn't want me to give mom your numbers. You I never whenever, said that one bit. Whenever I would come over to see you guys or visit, and I would say, you know, maybe you guys should go talk to mom or something, or give her your number, and you guys would always say, drop it. No, not we're true. not doing that. Yes, it is that true, is and you know false. it's true. No, it's you guys not. always did that, and it was so unfair. I tried so hard to keep it together with everybody, but you guys always <clears> just bashed everybody, and you refused to even give any information at all. And you okay. know you refused uh, okay, to Okay, let me let me just ask everybody here, and listen, just make a decision about this. I've said that you are a bunch of right fighters. Now, I just timed your response to 37 seconds. Is that how you want to spend your time here today? No. Do you want to spend your time with me on national television justifying yourself about whether he told her or you told him not to give somebody their phone number? Is that really how you want to spend no, your time? No, I'm just saying, I'm in response to his question, <clears throat> he's saying that we Because you need to set the record straight. you got to be right about this, I right? I am right. I, I, okay, I, well, they're okay, just so we got it. So yeah. you're right. No, no, I'm just saying, he was saying that we never tried to contact him, when in reality... We're now passing two minutes. Keep going. They didn't want us... We're going to be talking about <laughs> fixing things, but we're going to get you right. You're, we're passing two and a half minutes. Keep going. Okay, I'll stop. No, seriously, you want to be right. This no, is what I you don't came for. I want to be right. You I'm want everybody to know you're right when get, you go home. I guess I want to get clarification because I think that there is a lot of he said, she said, which, you know, and it was so the long clarification ago. is that what you said is right. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm yes, just, you are. You spent the last three minutes now saying you're right. I'm saying Don't that you hate it when I'm right? You are right. No. I'm no. I'm, well, I can I, play the tape back and we can listen to it again can. and you can get stopped watching time it. I'm <clears> saying it's hard for me to listen to them say that we that she didn't contact them when It's a mess. It's isn't hard. It? It's I, I do, it's it is. It's hard for me to hear them say that when I feel like that they they didn't want they didn't want anything to do with her. They were mad from the beginning. They were mad. That was the thing. But you know, here's the problem. You could this this is a big room, isn't it? You could fill it ten times over with what you don't know about what you're talking about. That may be. It's not maybe. You don't know a damn thing about the dynamics of the impact of divorce and fragmented families on children at the time it happens. You know your experience of it. Right. But you don't know his experience of it. You don't know her That's experience true. of it. Listen, guys, come on. There's nothing you're going to say that is going to convince me that you as a mother are justified in not being a leader in this family and bringing everybody back together. You got a divorce. That's your decision. And it is your right to make it and you do not need your children's approval to do it. You had to make a decision and I, I'm not judging that decision. Have I asked you one question about that? No. 
I'm not asking you, did he, was he really this way? Did he really do that? Did he really do the other? I'm not asking you about that. I'm not judging you about that. You had to make a decision. And what I know is your history, according to all of your children, those that are in contact with you now and those who aren't, is that you spent your life as a loving, devoted, and caring mother. Thank you, I did. That you nurtured him, that you nurtured his brother, that you nurtured her, that you nurtured her, that you sacrificed, that you did so much for your family. Agreed? Yeah, we Agreed? kids. Agreed. Nobody questions that. So I can only assume that if you made a decision to exit this marriage, that it was after careful consideration and deliberation. I question how it was played out with these children. I question the fact that when they had a reaction to it, where they didn't side with you, agree with you, support you in it, that that created a fracture that has gone on for 12 years years. I made a list, just a partial list. This is an exhaustive list. It's just a partial list of what you have missed mm -hmm. in the time that has gone on. Twelve years of birthdays, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Christmases, Easter's, and Mother's Days. You missed Jordan's high school graduation. You missed Blake's wedding. You missed Carlin's mm -hmm. two college graduations. Jordan's homecoming from Iraq and is going to Iraq, the birth of your grandson Andrew, grandson Andrew's surgery, the birth of a granddaughter Liliana, uh, Carlin's buying a house, Carlin's engagement, all of these things that you could and should be a central figure in have been passed because of a blow up 12 and a half years ago. Are you kidding me? Oh, it breaks my heart. Does it make sense to you? Goodness, no, it's then never Then why don't sense. you lead this family out of this mess? What I'd love the, to. What I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Why, why, why not lead this family out of this mess? I would love to lead them out of why this mess. Why not forgive everybody for everything that's been done? Why not forgive yourself for what you've done? Why not ask forgiveness for things you may not have done? Why not just hit the reset button and start this thing over? You can't change what's happened. It, 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 it seems to me that there comes a point where you just got to say, you know what? If God forbid... You have, you know what a, a fine young man you have here? I do. A contributing member of society. This is, a, mm -hmm. this is a, a really fine young man you have here. Can you imagine if, God forbid, something catastrophic happens to one of these children? And what you say is, well, they're now gone forever, and I spent the last 12 and a half years out of no contact because I didn't like what happened during a short period of time of emotional upheaval in our family that they didn't ask for. They hooked their wagons to our stars as mother and father. We ran it off in the ditch. Right. They got caught up in the crossfire. I didn't like the choices they made, whether it was abandoning me, turning their back, whatever you call it. And now they're gone. There's not a day goes by I don't think about them or pray for them. I've been wanting to know, how do you sleep at night? When you don't really, you kids. really think this is I've the time that. to attack this woman? No, I've you really that. think, given the, 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 the rhetoric that we're embracing here and where I'm taking this, you, you think that the next reasonable comment is, how do you sleep at night, woman? That's what I had asked her before. She said that she's think about us. I'd wondered if she has. Every day. Every day. Coming up, Jody is closer to Blake's ex-wife than she is to her own son. We're going to find out why when we come back, and I'm going to tell you why I think this thing has veered off so badly. You're going to be surprised what I think the catalyst is. Even after all the incidents that occurred, even though Alyssa lived with Jody, we all kept in touch with Alyssa. I was very close to Alyssa. We were the two youngest of the kids. Blake invited both Jody and Alyssa to his wedding. He wanted his family there. I talked to Alyssa several times, and she gave me every excuse in the book. I explained to her my ultimatum. If you don't go to your brother's wedding, as much as it hurt me to say, I won't speak to you after this. I just can't comprehend 
how you can go to your own brother's wedding. Alyssa feels she's an only child because her brothers and sisters are trash. That hurt even more. That just cemented everything. For her to disown the rest of us, it's a slap in the face. I never thought they were trash. I never <laughs> said that. I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. So what, that's how he thinks. And it's a shame. Sad. It's a shame. They have yeah. seen posts on Facebook. That's why there's a. They're that's why we believe that. Facebook. We don't believe it for no reason. How's this going for you so far? Interesting. You know what's going to happen? Y'all are going to leave here in a few minutes, and you're, you're going to all go backstage, and you may actually bond in in, in standing against me, which would be okay. Because uh, you can go backstage and say, well, uh, that didn't go like I thought it was. I thought he was going to help us, and all he did was pick on us. Um, yeah, I'm trying to shake this up because you're on self-destruct here. Absolutely. You're absolutely on self-destruct. Do you all believe in the power of language? You know what I mean when I say the power of language? Words are powerful, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I listen to everything you all say in your interviews. I read everything you say in your interviews. Everything. Every word. And a pattern jumped out at me. You guys have a way of using catastrophic language to describe non-catastrophic events. You, you're talking about it. You say, the straw that broke the camel's back. They went behind my back to steal me blind. I was devastated. You were devastated? I was devastated. You were just devastated. What is devastated? Is that where, like, your body parts fall off of you <laughs> and you're laying in? Oh, come on. I, I'm no. serious. Devastated? They dropped off the face of the earth. My children dropped off the face of the earth. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> the words just turning around and people are just falling off of the earth? They're not my daughters anymore. Whose daughters are they? I didn't know there was a window to go to where you could say, I'm turning these in. I want to reissue here. I probably would have done it a few times if I thought you could. And you call myself an only child, turned her back on us. It's like putting your head in a piranha tank. Yeah. Seriously? It, Have you ever seen piranhas attack a bleeding you, animal? They go after you. It's like putting your head in a piranha tank. You mess with her, you're going to feel her wrath. You're going to get an earful. It's torn all apart. They have just ripped our family to pieces. Just ripped it to pieces. I mean, you just pull around, there's hair, teeth, and eyes everywhere. Oh, my God. They've ripped our family to pieces. They've turned on her. You are the ringleader. I guess. You are the ringleader. And your better, mom is dead to me. Turned our world upside down, threw my things out of the house. I saw them stacked in the driveway. They looked like they had been neatly stacked in the driveway. It didn't look like they had been thrown out of there in a frenzy. They threw my brothers out. You can throw him out? I, I, I didn't throw anybody out. Blake says, kicked us out. She is an evil person. No longer knows who she is, like they couldn't pick you out of a lineup. <laughs> Brothers and sisters are trash, he says. Jordan says it's like a slap in the face. Just a slap in the face. Come on. Guys, do you wonder why you're, you're all so upset? This is melodramatic, catastrophic language. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. You're not devastated. I was when it first happened. No, you weren't. <laughs> no, you weren't. You remained vertical. Oh. You remained coherent. You can talk. You are now. I cried in bed for a couple days. Oh. But <laughs> you were sad. I was sad. That's a <laughs> well, A lot of this is going to come back and be laid at your feet. Exactly. Don't help me. She's... I'm just saying I agree with you. The last conversation I had with Carlin, she had phoned me and wanted to know if she could get photos I'd had of all the children as they were growing up. That was really all I had to hang on to, and I was not willing to give them up. So they were the only happy memories I had left. They'd taken everything else. Carlin said, well, I am your daughter. And I told her, you're not my daughter. My daughter would not treat me this way. That was the last I heard from Carlin. Well, Jody says she doesn't consider Carlin her daughter anymore. 
Carlin says her mother is dead to her. Now, Doesn't Jody. I correct that? Sure. I didn't say that she is dead. I said. Oh, that, yes, she did. No. I said that it's like she's dead, but it's worse because she's not dead, but she doesn't care to be there for her kids. That's better? <laughs> it's worse. I, I raised them alone for almost 10 years. I, I don't understand how this could have happened. I don't know how it went from not speaking. Does it matter? No, but I don't it know how matter. it got so because out of control. You, if you start taking inventory, you're not going to like it because you're the boss. You're the mother. You're the parent. You're the one that sets the tone, guides through the maze. So a lot of this is going to come back and be laid at your feet. Exactly. Don't help me. Jesus. I'm just saying, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's how it should be. <laughs> So how do we fix this, or is it fixed? Maybe 12 and a half years is not long mm -hmm. enough. You feel my pain? No, <laughs> seriously. You have... I agree. You have really bad timing. <laughs> okay. You know, my dad used to tell me, boy, don't mm -hmm. you ever miss a good chance to shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you're saying how I feel. What you're saying is how I feel. My dad used to say, boy. <laughs> don't ever miss a good chance to shut up. Then what you should do is just bask in that quietly. Okay. What you want to do right now is stop talking. Okay. Okay? Because I'm trying to make some progress here and you're not helping. Every situation needs a hero. I don't know how this went from one day to a month to a year to two, three, four. I don't know how it got so out of control. Please, can we start over? Let me tell you something. You don't know something about her? Absolutely. She has a really good heart. And she really loves you a lot. She even loves you a lot, and she misses you a lot. And there are parts of life that you can only share in a meaningful way with your own people. And um, extended family is very, very important when children are growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, to learn that somebody loves them besides just their mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like grandparents and aunts and uncles that they can feel safe with. It's how they begin to expand their radius in life. It's how they learn, you know, that they can go further and, and, and do good things. And, and, and this guy that you guys are kind of demonizing down here, all he ever had the audacity to do was love your mother. He's not trying to be your dad. He just, he just, he just loves your mother. And, you know, I just always had a soft spot for people that loved my children, my family. If somebody's good to my family, I, I always felt a kind of a kindness to people that were good to my family. And he's been a soft place for your mother to fall. Mm -hmm. he, he, didn't, he didn't ask for any of this. I am just asking you guys to hit a reset button here. Be, every situation needs a hero that just says, look, I don't know how we got in this mess. I probably made some mistakes sure. in the way that this unfolded. Perhaps I misread y'all's readiness for this divorce. Perhaps you got too involved in it. And maybe I got my feelings hurt and y'all got your feelings hurt and I don't know where the first link in that chain was, but I know where the link is that I am now. And I'm extending an olive branch. I just want to love y'all and be loved by y'all. And you know how you do it? You start out by having some boundaries. You start out by saying, let's all get together in a public place where perhaps 
will have some inhibition to having a throwdown. And, and the boundary is we're not going to talk about anything that's happened. We're just going to be in the moment. We're just going to, we're just going to be in the moment and enjoy each other's company and, and see the kids and, and just have a non-judgmental good time. And then we're going to try to build on that. And I am more than happy to, to bring uh, some professionals in here that can kind of unravel this ball of yarn behind closed doors for y'all individually and collectively to help bring some peace to this situation. Thank you. But it begins with somebody standing up and saying, this situation needs a hero. And since I'm the mom, it's going to be me. Because I say enough is enough. It's time that we start loving each other up again. And I'm going to be the first one to extend that offer. And that's my suggestion. Thank you. To you. Not because it's your fault. Not because you have any bigger role into anybody else, although I believe you do because you're the parent, but just because somebody has to, and it might as well be you. Absolutely. I love you, Carla, and I love you, Blakely, both. I never have not loved you. Please, can we start over? I don't know how this went from one day to a month to a year to two, three, four. I don't know how it got so out of control, but I would like it to end. Absolutely. I want to end this and... I do want to end this. I want to end it. Will, will you accept that offer? Yes, I'll accept it. Will you accept that offer? I'll accept the offer. And just a step, I'm not saying just, just a step at a time. A step at a time. Fair enough? Yeah, that's fair. And, and I will get help to facilitate beyond that step. Thank you. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, coming up, tips for parents when talking to their kids about divorce. We'll be right back. You know, we've been talking about divorce, and I want to give you some tips about talking to your children if a divorce is imminent. First, you need to be as honest with them as possible, but you have to do it in an age-appropriate way. And I know that term gets used a lot, but it just really means you don't take them into concepts they don't understand. And you need to acknowledge their feelings. And so what are they? Well, they're going to be scared. They're going to be confused. And children always have a way of figuring out how things are their fault in some way. They might hear mom and dad arguing about money, for example, and you could be arguing about mortgage payments or something really big. But they'll go sit on their bed and say, wow, if I didn't need $11.80 for school pictures, maybe mom and dad wouldn't be getting a divorce. They do have a way of figuring out how it's their fault. So you have to acknowledge those feelings. Be fair when talking about the other parent. It doesn't help you if they don't have a relationship with their other parent. That will come back to haunt you. Let them know they didn't cause this in any way whatsoever. Tell them their parents love them, even though their feelings for each other may have changed. But let them know that both parents love them very, very much. I'll have more information about all this on drphil.com. I appreciate you guys being here today and talking about this, and I am going to provide some help and guidance after this, but take it a step at a time. It really, it doesn't matter. In the final announcement, it doesn't matter who said what to who back when. What matters is where you go from here. Not even God can change what has happened. Right. What you need to focus on is where you are now and what will happen. So we'll, we'll be working on this. Thanks for being here. So long. Thank you.